Right now, we're hearing from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle who pushed for Gross's release. One of them, Senator Bill Nelson of Florida, is with us. Senator, thank you so much for taking the time. Always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, can you talk about some of these efforts to get him free? They went on for such a long time. Uh, yes, sir. But I want to say at the outset, because you're getting mixed reviews, I'm as anti-Castro as any of mm -hmm. them. And uh, I think this is a good move. It's an exchange of two Americans held in captivity for three Cubans. And then uh, it is an exchange of discussions of recognizing Cuba for uh, Cuba freeing the dissidents and starting to institute reforms. And that is absolutely essential to give the Cuban people freedom. Now, to your answer, a uh, year and a half or so ago, I was with uh, President Martelli of Haiti. He's a friend of mine. And he was going on a state visit to Cuba to see Raul Castro, and I asked him to raise this directly with uh, Raul. He did. He called me back, and he said that Raul was wanting to talk to the U.S. government. I passed that on immediately to the National Security Council. Uh, I have no idea if that had part of the effort here, but I want to give credit to President Martelli, who did that not once, but twice. Part of a, an interesting constellation of sometimes odd bedfellows around the world that partnered to make this happen. Just want to note to the audience, this is a family spokesperson who is introducing some of the players that will then, in turn, be introducing Alan Gross. We're going to keep watching that and bring you any news out of it. That's Jill Zuckman, family spokesperson. But I do want to get in another question to the senator here. Your fellow Florida senator, Marco Rubio, has been responding in a big way today to this announcement from the president. He called President Obama the worst negotiator in modern in U.S. history. What do you say to the argument that Cuba just hasn't conceded enough in this arrangement? Well, that's just simply not true. First of all, we've got two Americans home, one of which you know about that was about to die. Uh, secondly, uh, if this brings about the reforms of all giving freedom to the dissidents to allow freedom of speech, of the press, of freedom of assembly, then this is a monumental step in the right direction. And how do you think this is going to play out? Politically, obviously, we've seen Jeb Bush just come out and say this is the wrong move. He doesn't support normalizing relations. Um, here are some numbers. Uh, if we can go to slide four here, we have actually the latest polls from the Atlantic Council finding 56% of Americans are in favor of rebuilding those relations with Cuba. Um, do you think that this is going to redound to the president's favor? How do you think this will play out on the campaign trail going towards 2016? Uh, yes, we're in the 21st century. We're ready to move on. It will redound to the president's favor. Uh, what will happen, uh, this will get all mixed up in the politics. But understand, mm -hmm. as you play to the Cuban-American community, it is significantly split. In large part, if it's an older community or if it is the younger community. And therein is the difference as to whether they will accept or not accept this move. And, and Senator Nelson, do you think it's realistic that Congress might act to lift the embargo following on this? Uh, give that some time, Ronan. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's too early. Let's see how uh, Raul is going to react. If he's mm -hmm. really going to start doing some reforms, if he starts doing that and giving the people freedom, then I think uh, the votes will be there to lift the embargo. Senator Nelson of Florida, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Ronan.